Okay, so we're going to have a look over the answers for week one. So that's your questions on the model text and then the different um, language features that you found in the text. Okay, so first of all, we're looking at the questions that you answered on day two. So the first one is using the information in the first few sentences, why might someone decide to make this math game? They would make this game because they are missing their maths learning and worrying about forgetting maths knowledge. Okay, next, how is this maths game different from snakes and ladders? It is different because it includes maths questions. Also, it has rainbows and rain clouds instead of snakes and ladders. Okay, well done if you got both of those points. Third, so it's a language question. Find and copy five adjectives used in the what you will need section. And those five adjectives, okay, large old long straight colored plain sharp flat quiet so you can have any five of those next what is the first thing that you need to do in order to make this maths game let's just move it there so the first thing you need to do is collect all of the materials that you need and that is the first thing in that what you need to do section what advice does the writer give when asking an adult for equipment? They advise the reader to ask an adult nicely when they are not in the middle of doing something. Okay, so remember that only ask adults to do something if you are asking nicely and they're not right in the middle of doing something. We let's go back down here. Okay, find and copy two adverbs from the section starting. After that, pick up. Okay, so remember adverbs are those verbs that tell us how something is done. Okay, so they add a bit more description to the verb saying how it's done. So the two adverbs in that section were carefully and accurately. Seven, why is it necessary to use a ruler in section four of the instructions? The answer is you should use a ruler to measure the squares so that they are the same size. Eight. What materials could be used as counters for the game? You could use small bits of cardboard or small items from around the house, such as decorations. Nine, do you think this text is formal or informal? Find at least two pieces of evidence from the text to support your answer. Okay, so you are making sure that you have given some evidence from the text in order to get, get the mark for this one. Okay, so I decided that it is informal, so I have written this as an example answer. Okay, you might have written something different, but just think, have you got that evidence? So I've said, I think the game is formal because the writer uses lots of abbreviations like let's get started. They also talk directly to the reader in a friendly tone and offer support by saying things like, well done. Okay, so I've got one piece of evidence here and one piece of evidence here. And the final question, what math skills could be revised using the game? Use section seven to find some ideas. So some math skills that could be revised are using the four operations, addition, subtraction, multiplying and division, converting measures and recalling square numbers. Okay, so lots of retrieval questions there, a couple of language based questions and that one inference question there where you would probably get two marks for that one. Okay, so um, you can mark if you've got those right, think about anything that you got wrong. I'll also be sending this out on email so that you can read through the answers on your own if you like. Okay, so then day three, you were looking for the different language features. So the first one that you were looking for in the text was expanded noun phrases. Okay, so you might have found more examples than what I've written down. Okay, or you might not have found as many. Okay, but what's important is, did you find a few? Did you know what you were looking for with an expanded noun phrase? If you weren't sure, Okay, it might be that you need to do a little bit of research looking up those, those features um, so that you're able to write them next week in your, in your text. Or if you want to 
email your teachers and ask for some information and some help, then please just email us and we'll get back to you. Okay, so back to this. So expanded noun phrases. Here are some you could have found. Simple materials, your very own easy to play maths game. Maths game there being the noun. A range of maths questions. Okay, and then the next ones are all from that section, that list of equipment that you need. Okay, so that's a really good time where you're going to use loads of expanded noun phrases because you want to give lots and lots of specific information about what equipment is needed. So we've got a large old roll of wrapping paper that has one side, a long straight ruler, a straight object that could be used like a ruler, a variety of felt of coloured felt tip pens or pencil crayons, okay, and so on. So you can see those yourself. Okay, loads of expanded noun phrases used in that section. You can see with some of those, you've got expansion before the noun and after as well. So if we look at um, this one here, a straight object that could be used like a ruler. So straight is your adjective before the noun object, and then it's expanded afterwards with that could be used like a ruler. So with those expanded noun phrases, as I said, you can expand before the noun and after too. Okay, next up, adverbial phrases. So again, you might have found more than this, you might not have found all of these ones, okay, but these are the ones that I found. So I've got to start with, once you have everything you need, after that, now that the square is drawn, once your board is ready, next, from around your home and in order to play. Okay, and then we've got imperative verbs, so those bossy verbs that tell you what it is that you need to be doing. These are the ones I found. Collect, ask, clear, roll, pick up, draw, divide, use, measure, make, colour, cut, decide. Okay, so in instructions, it's all about you're telling someone what they need to do. So using lots of imperative verbs. Okay, next up, we are looking at relative clauses. So they are those subordinate clauses which start with relative pronouns. Have a think, can you remember all the relative pronouns? Can Miss Stray remember all the relative pronouns? Okay, so we've got which, who, that, where. Okay, hopefully you've remembered them because obviously uh, my brain's not quite working as well as your, yours might be. Okay, let's have a look then. So we've got which can be found around your house, which are mentioned above, which are instead of snakes and ladders, which the players will move around the board. Okay, so they're all adding extra information into the middle of your sentences using commas to separate them from the main clause. Okay, and subordinate clauses. So they're those clauses that don't make sense on their own. You can always find them by finding the subordinate conjunctions. Okay, and I've said they can come at the end of your sentence or at the start of your sentence. So I found as items may be in special hiding places, when they are not in the middle of doing something else, if you want to make quite a large board game because you want your squares to be the same size. So my subordinate conjunctions as, when, if and because. Okay, so um, your final couple of days, so your final couple of days, you will have written your own language features all about making a pizza. Okay, so um, you can check over those yourself, especially now that you've seen the examples from the text that might have changed your mind about some of the um, example types you've written. Okay, I hope that this video has helped and I will be back on Monday to give you a little bit more information for the upcoming week. Okay, have a nice weekend everyone. Bye bye.